Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun here, and obviously I'm dressed up like this for a reason. I've got my steel pot, that's really a steel pot. I've got my slant pocket greens, and why? Well, in this box right here, I have a very faithful replica of the M1911A1 G.I. Joe U.S. government pistol, and let's take a look at it. Alright, this pistol right here comes from SDS Imports, that's Sam Delta Sam Imports, or Sierra Delta Sierra Imports of Tennessee. And uh, what do we have right here? And what makes this a GI or a U.S. Army model 1911? A lot of you young kids out there in the audience do not remember, or you're too young, to remember when there were literally millions of surplus World War II 1911s on the market in the United States of America. When I was a teenager, these things were going for two and three hundred bucks. G.I. Joe, you know, a lot of them had messed up or worn out uh, finishes and so on and so forth. Now, today, if you were to find a World War II era G.I. 1911A1, it's a collector's item, right? And it's going to cost you anywhere from $1,000, $1,500, maybe $2,000 if it's a Rockola or an IBM or whatever. So that's cool for collectors, but I like to shoot guns. I want to go out and shoot the gun. I don't want to get it and hold it with white gloves and hang it up, you know, in a shadow box. If I'm going to own a gun, I actually want to shoot it. I want one that I can actually afford. And unfortunately, a lot of the new model GI 1911s are kind of expensive. Uh, some of them can reach almost upwards of $1,000. And you say, man, that seems kind of expensive for a box stock 1911. Well, this gun is obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but it is imported. SDS uh, imports brings them into the United States. Now, what makes a 1911A1 a mil spec or a GI, what makes it different than the one you might buy today from Springfield or Kimber or Wilson or Ruger or fill in the blank, right? What makes it different? Well, number one, the original guns had what was, well, they had a, a grip safety, not beaver tails. These were not beaver tail. They weren't wide. They didn't have a bump on them and they were relatively narrow. And after shooting it for a while, you'd end up with a little strawberry or a bite mark right there. It was very common to get a bite mark right here on your hand from these guns. Obviously, it's not a combat hammer. This is the typical spur hammer that you would find on your GI 1911. We have a small or standard size thumb safety over here, uh, which, which works just fine. Uh, but most modern 1911s have changed and altered and modified that. Up on top, you have tiny, tiny sights that are, I guess they're technically adjustable for windage because you could bang on this thing, you know, left or right. But that's about it. That's about all you're going to get to do. And the front sight is just a little tiny bump. There's just this little tiny bump there. Also, also, as you will notice, the ejection port right here it seems kind of small, doesn't it? It is not extended and flared and polished like your modern 1911s. That's one of the things that they, the upgrades that they did to modern 1911s is they would cut this out, polish it, and flare it so that you wouldn't have to worry about that brass coming out. Because every once in a while with these, you'd get what was called a stove pipe, right? Which is a type two where a piece of empty brass gets caught and then you've got a piece of, bra a piece of ammo trying to go in and you got a piece of brass caught in and the gun is not working. Now this gun right here, it's a very well-made gun. Uh, I've got my little notes here so I don't forget anything. It has a five inch barrel, which is standard. This is a full size 1911, as you expect. It has a hammer forged steel barrel, slide and frame. So the slide, the frame and the barrel, they're all steel. This is not an aluminum frame, okay? That's all steel, so it's a real serious heavy gun. Uh, it comes with a seven round magazine. And a lot of you guys are like, seven rounds? 
No, Paul, you don't understand. Standard 1911 mags are eight rounds. No, kids. Back in the olden days, when I used to carry one of these, and yes, I carried one of these when I first joined the Marine Corps. For the first two years I was in the Corps, I carried one of these. The magazines were seven rounds. It wasn't until, I believe, the late 80s or early 90s, I believe it was the early 90s, that they redesigned the follower so they could stick another round in there. But your GI spec, your GI spec mags held seven rounds. So that's seven plus one in the pipe, right? Uh, just for authenticity, they put a lanyard loop right here. These, uh, my curses are still hanging in the air to this day over Camp Lejeune from jamming in a magazine and putting my palm into that lanyard loop. This is the bane of the existence of the GI. You slam that thing in there, bam! Not fun, okay? Nobody uses friggin' lanyards anymore anyway, but it's, it's there because it's historical. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the mainspring housing is different. It's a rounded one, and this is different than what you would see on your modern upgraded 1911s. And you've got your brown polymer grips, which are pretty standard, with flathead screws. So, if you guys are looking for an authentic GI 1911, brand new, out of the box. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. They actually polished the feed ramp on this, which is something that a gunsmith would have done to an original gun aftermarket, but they polished it. I've been out to the range with this already. Uh, shot a number of rounds. I shot Black Hills ammunition, the Honey Badger stuff, no problem. I shot the Black Hills Full Metal Jacket, no problem. I shot the Barnall Steel Cased Full Metal Jacket, ball ammo, no problem. Uh, I shot, before I came to sit down and review to this, I, I shot probably between 150 and 200 rounds or so through this gun. I oiled it and cleaned it and uh, it, it's good to go. So if you're looking for an authentic U.S. Army GI 1911 that's more affordable, that's not $1,000, these guns are listed MSRP for, I believe, around $430, maybe $439. They're, less, they're way less than $500. So these guns you can get for less than $500. It's a very, very well-made, solid steel, faithful replica of the 1911 A1 and the sucker shoots. So there you go. I'm Paul Markle with Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.